What up, Billy? What's up, everybody? It's Jaren from Berkshire Bike and Board, and I Bingo. just built my dog's dream bicycle. What do I mean by that? This is my dream bicycle, essentially, but I built it with my dog in mind a little bit. Why is it my dream bike, and how did I get there? When building a custom bike, I always like to use what I call the custom bike Venn diagram. So I. I make three circles on a piece of paper. I write down what types of things I would like to do with said bicycle. So for this bicycle, my three circles were speedy gravel, bike packing, and commuting. You know, that's what I want this bike to do. Then I start writing down some characteristics of, you know, what would make a bike perform well in those three categories. Now you gotta remember, it's a give and take, you know? To have the fastest, the, the fastest bike on the market, probably isn't the best bike packing bike. So there's always a little bit of back and forth you do with the Venn diagram. But um, I've gone to a place where I'm pretty happy with it and I want to go through some specs on the bike to tell you about what falls into each of those individual categories and how this bike has become Josie's favorite bicycle. Good job, sit down, stay. Let's start with the first purpose of this bicycle, commuting. I live about a mile or so from the bike shop where I work just about every single day. I knew I wanted to be able to ride this bike back and forth to work, and I knew I was gonna give myself some bonus points if I could ride my dog back and forth to work. So, a few parts to make that possible or to make my life as a cycling commuter easier. Number one, I got these thingamajiggers from Problem Solvers, these things here. I wanted to be able to run a flat pedal, but I didn't want to have to run a flat pedal slash SPD combo all the time. They just look kind of hokey to me, and so I wanted something that was convertible, if you will. So right now, if you look at it, it's got a flat pedal on it. I click this baby, like so, it turns into just my regular SPD Shimano pedal. And then to get it back on, bingo. That's number one of the commuter. Number two, let's get Josie for this one. Josie, load up, load up. Okay, I got the dog in the back of the bicycle. She's taking this pretty well via some treats. She's mostly lab, so she's pretty motivated by food. But basically, what did I have to do on the bicycle for this? Bicycle trailer like this needs something to latch onto. So for this one, there's basically like a hip, like a ball and socket type joint. That won't work with a traditional through axle, so I had to get a through axle with an extension on it from Robert Through Axle makes the part. And what it does is it pushes the through axle a little bit further the frame compared to normal. So I could bolt on the Thule ball and socket joint and then put the dog on the back of the bicycle. Uh, we haven't done a ride all the way to work yet because there's some busy streets and I'm not comfortable, but uh, she's clearly pretty comfortable. The last thing, when you're cycling as a commuter, when you're commuting as a cyclist, I should say, well, I'll do a couple little gizmos. Number one, you need a rear blinky light. This bike has a dynamo on it. I'm gonna talk about that later, but I like the added safety of like a nice rear flasher. The other thing that I, thought was always kind of corny in the past because I've always been more of like a racy style cyclist is a snack bag. I love this bag for basically doing errands on the bicycle. This one is a, a Shimano, I think. Any old snack bag will do. Currently, I've got just a flat tire repair kit with some other gizmos in here. You know, as Lafayette Morton likes to call them, you can put your Sunnies in there. You can put your cigarette, uh, nicotine and your cash in there. What else do I have to go in there? And then really what lands in there most of the time is my phone. So gotta have a snack bag. And I think that's most of the commuting specific stuff on this bicycle. So riding with the dog, I've kept it at like 10 miles an hour or under. We've had a couple of minor slip ups, nothing major, but I'm not gonna basically use, use this as a commuting setup with the dog until I pull together some sort of harness for it and I figure out a way where I can make her comfortable when I shut the front blind. It's a work in progress. Right now we're just using it to ride down our little side street to work out in the morning, but so far so good. Second part of the custom bike Venn diagram, racy gravel or aero gravel. It's kind of its own category these days. What I mean by it is basically a gravel bike that I can go fast on. So a few things that I did on this bike to basically get me there. Number one, these are 40 millimeter wide handlebars. Over the last few years, we've seen gravel handlebars go like this, and now they're starting to go like this. And what I mean by that is originally everyone wanted to get their handlebars wider and wider to be more comfortable. But now as racing on gravel roads is starting to become more and more of a thing, we're seeing the handlebars come back a little bit narrower. This is a shallow drop and it's got a little bit of a flare to it. They're specialized tarot bars actually. Goddamn dogs, freaking noise.
strategy. I've got them in a 40 millimeter width, which is pretty narrow, you know? And so what I found is like the aero position is nice and comfortable and, and having a narrow handlebar doesn't really feel like it has that many drawbacks to me personally. Next thing about my dream bike, 54 centimeter frame. I feel like I goof this a little bit. Why? I'm not racing on gravel very often or at all, to be honest with you, or cyclocross this season, but I got a 54 centimeter frame, which is putting me in a much more aerodynamic position. You can see this right now. I've got a pretty significant drop from where my hips are to my, my handlebars. Now, that's great if you want to go fast because it puts you forward on the bicycle. I'm tooling this bicycle around the Berkshires with my dog who's perfectly taking a right now. Good girl. Good job. Well, you want a little treat? Here, I got a little treat for you. Good job. Do a poopy outside. Oh my God, I love you so much. You're such a good girl. Go play, go play. Anyways, if I got a 56 frame, the handlebars would be a little bit higher up. I'd be a little bit more level from uh, handlebar to saddle. It'd probably be a little bit more comfortable and a little better for what I'm actually using this bike for. So especially if you're watching this video, please send me a 56 centimeter frame. I'm just kidding. This is totally fine. It's working out. Next, the wheels. Probably the most exciting part about this bicycle to me. I'm not going to talk too much about the dyno right now. I'll talk about that in the bike packing section, but these are Noble wheels. I built them fully custom from Noble. They actually built them for me, but I gave them the specs. I wanted chrome spokes, which I think are awesome. I like the, the black wheel. I like the little Noble decals on there. Now, why did I choose Noble wheels? This is what is so awesome about Noble wheels and why I'm really excited about it. The Dynamo hub, the smallest hole count or spoke count I could get for a Dynamo hub was a 28 hole spoke count flange in the hub. Most racy gravel wheels or racy wheels in general that are made out of carbon are 24 holes. And so I was having a really hard time finding a rim and a hub combination that would work with a dynamo. Fast forward to Noble, it's pretty awesome. This is a 28 hole gravel wheel. It's like a 45 millimeter depth. So it's got some arrow to it. It's wide. This is a 45 millimeter tire on it. So it's able to seat a really nice wide tubeless tire. And most importantly for me, for this bike, it's fast, but it pairs to a 28 hole dynamo hub. So it's strong, it's beefy, and it's got all the compatibility I want for riding my bike fast at night. That's the most exciting part about the whole bike, but there's more to talk about. So another component to being a racy bicycle is the reason I got this bike probably is because it came with the universal derailleur hanger. This is like one of the first gravel bikes to be outfitted with that. And so this is a SRAM axis transmission rear derailleur, which mounts directly to the universal derailleur hanger. I need to count my front sprocket really quickly. I think it's a 42. 40. Okay, so the last bike I was running, I think I had a 44 in the front and 1138 in the back. It didn't give me the full breadth of gears that I wanted. This bike is currently doing that, at least for all the things that we're doing on gravel this time of year. It's a 42 sprocket in the front, and I've got a 1052 in the back. Nice big gear for going fast. It spins out at about 39 miles an hour. And then a super, super easy climbing gear, 40-52. I mean, it's crazy gear ratio. We rode like straight up Mount Greylock last night on dirt roads with no switchbacks. And I was cruising, heart rate was low. Very, very happy about the group set. Another thing for like the fast gravel riding is that this is a SRAM Axis ecosystem. I've also got the SRAM Axis dropper post in this bicycle. So. I hit this button, makes it harder to pedal. I hit this button, makes it easier to pedal. I hit them both at the same time. Dropper post goes up and down. Pretty swanky, no empty like blank buttons or anything like that. Um, it's clean and it's, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty luxurious if, you want to, if I'm gonna be honest. Part three of the custom bike Ben Dyer. And this is the bike packing setup. My vision board this year, yes, I have a vision board. I wanted to do a cycling overnighter before the end of the year. And so I knew I could like organize myself enough to go out for one night overnight. Three weeks at a time is, is tricky for me right now. So anyways, this is my like super lean bike packing overnight setup. There's a few things about this that I want to talk about that are like specific to the bike. Universal derailleur hanger and the dynamo were like the whole inspiration behind this bicycle. So if you don't know what a dynamo is, basically I spin my front wheel, my light turns on, right? This hub right there acts like a generator, sends power through the cable, up through the frame to the light. Same thing with the rear light. A lot of dynamo setups, the cables like wrap around the frame and stuff like that. Because I ran the SRAM access like wireless group set on this, I had a lot of basically empty holes in the frame 
strand that I could run the dynamo wiring through. So this actually, I'm super proud of this. This dynamo setup is completely internal. I had some hiccups along the way building this setup. I, it was my first time ever wiring one and doing it internally adds some complexities to it. I made some stupid mistakes, but I would say if you're interested in a dynamo setup, it's not very complicated. You just have to kind of like order this stuff and get into it. There's a lot of good videos out there on the internet. Maybe I'll make one at some point. Just to go over this bike packing setup really quickly. So my sleeping bag and my tent are in the back of the bike here. The only part of my tent that I have on the frame is just my tent poles. This is like cook setup in here. So I've got, I'll go more into the like a bike packing setup in a different video, but check this stove out. This is kind of wild. So basically, what do you got? You got fuel, you got like a little, you got a cook can, you got fuel. And then this is crazy. This is a, actually a stove. It's so small, super lightweight. We made coffee with it the other day on a trip. Bada bingo, bada bongo. Pretty impressive. That's food. Flat tire repair kit, whoop, goes in here for bike packing. Spork, uh, tent stakes, and then this was stupid. I would not recommend this. This is an AeroPress, you've probably all seen them before. Uh, it makes a nice cup of coffee on a, on a morning. I think moving forward, I'm gonna, I want this space back, and so I'm just gonna bring instant coffee, heat the water up, call it a day. I don't need to get funky like this, but I guess I have it now. Sleeping pads on the front of the bicycle, it just wraps underneath the handlebars here. I've been keeping water here because one thing that's tricky about the Crux, actually, I'll tell you, is that I, I wish there was another water bottle boss to lower, run the cage a little bit lower because even with like a standard like 16 or 18 ounce bottle, whatever size it is, not the taller one, it still bumps up into this frame. It doesn't fit that well. So I've been running like basically a rain jacket right here and my water bottle up on the front here. Now, obviously it was raining. I put this on anyway, so it's not a big deal if it gets a little bit dirty down there. That's the bike packing setup. And so like to, br to bring this all together, right? We've got the custom bike Venn diagram. So my absolute peak goal with this particular bicycle is to go bike packing, dog in the back of the bike, ride up to like a trailhead somewhere, ride some gravel, camp out with the dog in the tent, ride our bike back home in the morning and be able to get to work by nine o'clock. Like it, you know, the, the last time I went bike packing was like 10 years ago. I rode my bike down the coast of California and it was awesome, but it was like three weeks and, I, and my life was not that busy back then. Nowadays, going on a two week or three week bike packing trip, it's just not my priority right now. But riding from my house with my dog overnight, camping out somewhere, riding back home, and like making it to work by nine o'clock is like the pinnacle of what would make me happy with this setup right now. Or I'm not quite there yet for a lot of different reasons, but uh, I did do an overnight with this the other day with some buddies just to test it out and it works flawlessly. So this bike is awesome. It's basically my dream bike. I would say my, it's also my dog's dream bike. She's super excited about it. We've been having a lot of fun together and um, yeah, stay tuned for how to go overnight bike packing with your dog video, hopefully coming soon. It's getting cold out, probably springtime, but uh, yeah, we've been having a lot of fun. So. That's all I got.